Divine Truth Assistance Group. These group assistance sessions are about putting principles of divine truth into action. This discussion is part of the 2014 Australia Group 2 series. Jesus presents forgiveness and repentance concepts. Filmed on the 3rd of August 2014 in Monterey, New South Wales, Australia. This is part two. Okay. How are we doing? Now, there's one other concept I need to introduce you to before we proceed with our discussion proper. And that is the relationship that all of this has with God. Now, every time somebody damages you, they also have done something to God in that they have chosen to damage one of God's children and they have created harm for that child that God didn't want them to create. So they have automatically done some damage towards God. But God automatically forgives. So that person is automatically forgiven for their actions. But their soul retains the damage until they repent. Does everyone get what I just said there? So here's God. If we just put God up here. Every time one of these people damaged you, because they damaged you, there was damage that was perpetrated in their soul, which is a direct response from God's laws, telling them that God was displeased with their action that was out of harmony with love. God's laws are set up in such a way that this automatic, what you would call reciprocal damage, occurs to the soul every time you take an action that's out of harmony with love. So what happens is this person, even though God has forgiven them, let's say his mum, let's say that God's forgiven them already, that person will not feel God's forgiveness until they repent. In other words, you cannot be forgiven by God until you repent for your unloving behaviour towards God's children. You cannot be forgiven by God until you repent for your own unloving behaviour towards God's children. Just So you say that God automatically forgives? Yes. So is it a case of God automatically forgives but you won't feel that forgiveness until you've Correct. Repented. You will not okay. feel the forgiveness because the feeling is an emotion from God. And this emotion, the way God's constructed your soul, is this emotion cannot flow into your soul from God without you going through the repentance process. In other words, you, you cannot feel love from God unless you go through the repentance process. So this has a large bearing on your relationship with God. So God's forgiven every single thing you've ever done already. You will not feel it until you repent for everything you've done. Is that really clear? Isn't that is this very interesting thing, you see? Yep, so if we come down to Nick down the front here. Um, in my own experience of engaging repentance and forgiveness, I've experienced a lot of um, grief, sadness, pain associated with harm that I've done to others. Yeah. And also experienced memories and recollections of harm that's been done to me. Yeah. And there's been a lot of grieving in that process, but I've never felt, I'm just connecting with now, I don't think I've ever felt forgiveness, like love coming to me as a result of that is that because i haven't gone deep enough into the process because you haven't gone through the complete process of forgiveness of repentance 
or you haven't had a longing for God while you're repenting. Does that make sense? So in other words, you haven't had a lot. You, you've yet to work out what you did against God in that place. So is that, in that my feeling then is that I have sort of a, an incomplete process going on where I am Correct. actually engaging with the damage that's been done from a natural That you've natural done damage to others and you're yeah. feeling the damage that you've done to others, yeah. but you're not feeling that the damage you did to others affected your relationship with God. Mm. You, you don't see what happened there. And while you're blind to that, you will not feel the results of God's forgiveness. And that's probably due to the fact that I have blockages towards God. Correct. Yes. You have. So for me to engage repentance and forgiveness properly, I have to work on my blockages towards God. You, to feel that you are forgiven for the things you've done wrong, because remember the people may not forgive you, mm. because they're allowed to not forgive you if they want to. So they may not forgive you, but to feel the sense that you have been forgiven, you are going to have to connect to God in that process. You're going to have to see the effect it had upon your relationship with God and their relationship with God even. What you've done to other people has damaged their relationship with God. They've chosen to do all sorts of things as a result of what you did to them. Yeah? That makes sense, Nick? And, and unless you allow yourself to connect to that, you won't feel God's forgiveness. And if you don't feel God's forgiveness, that's why you'll go around wanting forgiveness from the people. You see, a person who's truly gone through repentance doesn't need forgiveness from another person. They need forgiveness from God. Once they receive the feeling of forgiveness from God, they know that they've truly repented. And on top of that, they also then know that they've been forgiven by God, even though they have not been forgiven by the person. Does that make sense? Okay. These are very simple but unknown truths about love on this planet. Yeah. If we go to Jenna. <clears throat> Um, does like repenting for the damage you've done to another person does that in any way help heal the damage in their soul? Yes, it done? does help them heal if you repent. Yep. When you re and also when you forgive, both of these things have the potential to heal other people. Okay. We'll talk about that perhaps a bit later as to how they have the potential. But you think about it, if you're truly repentant for an action you've taken towards another person, then you acknowledge to them that you did that, such, such a thing, if you have the chance to do that. But the soul inside, if you're truly repentant in your soul, you don't even have to speak to them. What's happening is if you're truly repentant in your soul, you'll feel a feeling of love towards that person and a feeling that, that you did the wrong thing by them that then means that they are allowed to know the truth inside themselves. That, like, There's a feeling that they start feeling. Before then, you were going, don't you recognise the truth of that? Don't, I didn't do anything to you. I didn't do anything wrong. That was the feeling coming from your soul. And then as soon as you go, oh, but I did from your soul, I did do something wrong towards you, I did harm you, and that actual feeling comes from your soul, now their soul has the ability to respond. Now some of them might get angry. For the first time in their life they'll get angry. Before then they just accepted the damage, but now they realise the damage is wrong. They might come and talk to you about the fact you did something wrong. You go, yeah, I know. And, and I, you know, I've just had these feelings towards you, feeling like sorry for what I've done. They will feel those emotions. And then there's a likelihood they might start feeling their own process. Does that make sense? Of yep. forgiveness. And then when you forgive another person for what they've done, that frees them from the feeling they're going to be punished by you for what they did. So that also has the potential to relieve them from one concern that they have to go through the process of repentance. So yes, both forgiveness and repentance do have an effect on other people's soul. And they have an effect on their soul, 
So it's not, it's not on their mind or their, it's on their soul that it has effect on. Yep. Yep. Good eye. Well, let's start going through our material now in terms of what we need to learn about all of this. What we've found is that one of the biggest problems we have and one of the biggest problems most people who hear divine truth have is they have complete self-deception with emotional processing. They attempt to experience an emotion that is preferable rather than the actual emotion. Right? So for example, I prefer to, 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 for example, forgive myself for what I did to my children than actually go through repentance of what I did to my children. That, that's one of those examples. Or I prefer to believe that somebody's treating me badly when actually I've been treating them badly all the way along. Right? This is a main problem for most people who don't progress towards God. Self-deception emotions will not result in progression and can never occur because they are not the absolute truth about our lives. In other words, what we're doing, if we look at this diagram here, is we are attempting to forgive people that we should be repenting towards. So many of you are attempting to forgive your children, for example, for what they do, when you should be repenting towards them. And many of you are attempting to forgive your partner for what they did to you, when you should be repenting towards them. Right? And instead, the people who we should repent, uh, forgive, we are, we are saying we did something wrong to them. So many of us have complete refusal to forgive our parents because we believe our parents were right when they were actually wrong, when they actually did something out of harmony with love. And we believe it so much in our mind because of our predisposition, or, or, or you could say our training, we believe that they were right and we're wrong. You know, so you see in this world all of these children thinking, oh, I've done wrong by my mum, I've got to go and, you know, repent towards my mum and all the things I did to her. You know, when the reality is mum needs to f f repent towards the child. <laughs> right? And this is a big problem on this planet. There are so many mothers in particular, but also dads who expect their kids to repent when actually their kids need to be asked for forgiveness. Yeah. So it's a big issue. When you feel the so-called feel, the wrong emotions, you're not actually doing any progress. You're actually doing further damage to them and yourself. When you expect a child to forgive you, or you expect the child to repent towards you, you are actually doing further damage to your child. And you might have a good cry and then wonder why your life's getting worse. Well, it's getting worse because you just went down the wrong track. You just imposed another emotion on your child that was unloving. And this is why many people don't progress. Because they're imposing emotions on other people that are completely unloving in the belief that they're actually doing something good. Anto. AJ, does that mean then if we, by doing repentance, that will develop the strongest relationship with God because you're learning so much about love in that moment and correct and the quality of the love because it's it automatically forgives someone else, um, gives another opportunity to another, and you learn a lot about God through this process, right? Forgiveness and repentance is one of the first ways you learn about God. In fact, you also learn a lot about God's laws and rules. You learn. A lot about that God's willing to forgive you but you're not going to feel that forgiveness until you repent there needs to be an openness in your soul towards the feeling and that that openness in your soul is repentance for what you've done right? so there, there needs to be and this is the thing asking God for forgiveness of all the things we've done is a very powerful thing that occurs to our soul because we now are open to the fact that we've done things wrong does that make sense? Whereas before we were in complete denial of them. We're telling everybody around us, there's nothing wrong with me, oh, there's nothing wrong with me. Even though we have this internal feeling, oh, maybe there is, but just ignore all of those things. Right? 
But once we start to go through repentance and actually ask for God's forgiveness for the things that we've done, we're now actually starting to understand the conditions under which love can flow. And this is a very powerful thing for you if you ever want to experience love. Julie, thanks. Oh, Jesus, I was just wondering, remorse, where does remorse come into with this repentance then? Well, remorse is one of the emotions involved in repentance, but it's not the only emotion. Okay. Because repentance requires not only remorse, but also a desire to right the wrong. Yeah. So, so, so the, we need to involve a number of processes in the pro process of repentance, not just remorse. remorse. And remorse is completely different to self-punishment. Self-punishment is, in fact, the avoidance of remorse. Yeah. Right? So to truly feel remorseful, you, you've got to stay away completely from self-punishment. Self-punishment is actually an emotion which is narcissistic in the process in, in this process and therefore not a true process involved in repentance or forgiveness mm. okay yep Bruce, thanks um, going back to diagram diagram um, you can is that correct that you may repent your, what you've done to your children or your environment yep can you seek forgiveness from them if, or did I hear you right saying you can't do that that actually is a negative well you can seek forgiveness from them in fact your soul as soon as you go through repentance will feel a feeling of seeking forgiveness from them but they may not forgive you they have free will they're allowed to choose to not forgive you they're allowed to choose to not forgive you for the rest of their existence Because they have free will, right? They're allowed to do that. Kadira, thank you. Kadira, um, we have so many different things that obviously need we need to deal with in terms of forgiveness and repentance. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I can't remember, you know, most of my life the things that I've done to people. How do we deal with that? How do we go about about? Feeling the repentance and forgiveness for It's a good things. question, Kadira. God's laws are such that as you become more emotionally open, you will remember everything you've ever done. Okay. Everything. And a denial of the remembrance of those things is actually a desire to avoid the process of repentance. Okay. The reality is, is as you become more open emotionally, you will start to remember things that you've never remembered before. Right. This is God placing before you the record that's already in your soul of all the things that you've done towards one of God's children, someone other than yourself, or even towards yourself, for which you will need to be repentant. Right. Does that okay. make sense? Yes, and we need to allow that process to go, to happen. The majority of us don't, and we use the... The, we use the statement, I can't remember, to even stop the process from beginning. Right. And we've got to be very careful of that. Every single person who's ever lived who starts the process of repentance will eventually remember absolutely everything they've ever done that has been out of harmony with love. Wow. <laughs> wow. Yeah. 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 Now, God's got a very loving process to help you through this process. Because God, and this is the, one of the things about divine love, right? It is a very loving process to help you through it. Or you've got a very grindingly hard process, which is the law of compensation. The law of compensation acts upon the soul who is not repentant and who does not desire forgiveness. The laws of God's love act upon the soul who is repentant and who desires God's forgiveness. The key for us is to become aware of all the things we've done right. and to be willing to be aware. Right? The reason why there is such a large onset of Alzheimer's and other diseases like that on this planet is because the majority of growing adults in their old age do not wish to remember anything about what they've done. Right? Once that emotion is addressed, those people gain their memories back. 
of all the things they've done. Yeah. So if you've got an onset of Alzheimer's and you're aware of such, start with the fact there's a whole heap of things you don't want to remember. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> all right. Yeah, good questions. If you come to Laura, these are excellent questions. This is why we wanted to remove the other group because we knew that we'd get much more engaged questions here. Um, Laura, so if I choose not to forgive someone who's repentant towards me, mm. is that um, put it like that's an error, that's a sin, is it? Or well, we'll talk about that a little bit, but the reality is if, say, our parent is, not, is repentant towards us truly from God's perspective, yeah. but we refuse to forgive our parent, there is a lot of internal damage you do to yourself in that state. Yeah. And as we'll see as we go through this discussion, if you refuse to forgive, you will automatically create addictions and mm -hmm. therefore automatically create things for which you will need to repent. So not only will you have refused to forgive, but now you will have a whole heap of additional pain for which you will need to repent. So every time you choose to not forgive, you are automatically going to create things for which you, are need to re which you will need to repent and forgive. Yeah, wow. So in other words, what you're doing when you refuse to forgive is you are doubling up your own pain. Yeah. So this is a very important thing to understand. Thanks. Yeah. Pamela, thank you. Um, AJ, as far as teachers are concerned, I went through a religious school. and in Sorry, you went to a... Catholic school. Catholic school, yeah. So therefore, to forgive those teachers, I mean, that system is so broad and the teachings of it, yep. how far back does that have to go? Because they had such a big influence on my... <laughs> Uh, introduction to God. Of course. A they've fear had of a God. Terrible influence on your intro introduction to God, right? Yes. And yes, um, you will not be able to have a relationship with God until you forgive them because there's a whole heap of emotions tied up or belief systems that you have that prevent you from desiring a relationship with God. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. So, so this is where forgiveness is a very important process for you because it's going to be very difficult for you to actually even want a relationship with God until you've gone through this process of forgiving them for what they've done. Forgiving the whole system? Yeah. Yeah. Forgiving the whole system for what it did to you, yeah. Thank you. The whole Catholic system, yeah. Uh, Robert, thank you. Um, if I... Um say forgive the person who damaged me the most hypothetically my mother yeah um that's going to make it much easier to um forgive everyone else who's harming me in my adult life or and to repent as well or well it depends how you respond to each individual person you need to forgive like so for some people they find their mother easier to forgive because she's your mother but for your dad even though there might be less to forgive, you might have a lot more refusal inside of you to forgive because of some of the emotions coming from your mother. <laughs> Does that make sense? She doesn't yeah. want to forgive men. She brought you up right from the time of conception to not forgive men. So you might have even more feelings about not forgiving a man inside of you, even though men have done less to you, than you would forgiving your mother, even though she's done more to you. Does that make yeah, sense? Yeah, it does. So this is the trouble is that we need to complete the process of forgiveness if we're truly going to have an effect on our lives on, in all areas. Okay, thanks. Yep, yep. Phoebe, thank you. Um, so I can forgive, say, my dad without having dealt with the emotions that I've got within me because of him. No, we need to talk to you about that. Yeah. We need to talk to you about the process of forgiveness. Yep. We haven't discussed that yet, remember. Yeah. Yep. So at this stage we haven't discussed the process. Nick, thanks. Uh, Jesus, uh, is this a great way to like crack through your facade in a way? By obviously if you want to actually go through the process of repentance and stuff, Yep. then surely that's like you, you know, really wanted to get through all of the, you know, facade and get into that hurt self and then Correct. allowing that, basically that channel to God and, yep. you know, letting your real self Because both repentance and forgiveness require something of you 
and that is for you to recognize God's truth on that issue. And because of that, they, it's so powerful. You have to give up all sorts of facades and all sorts of addictions in order to do that, right? So, so repentance and forgiveness are going to require of you that, you that you actually accept God's truth about every interaction you've ever had. Right? So, for example, many of you are a complete refusal of doing that with your mothers. You think mum's fine, she's, she's cool, you know. Uh, you can see a bit of damage with dad, but mum, no, she was cool. She brought me up, she was lovely. And, and not actually see the damage, so you're not seeing God's truth. And if you don't see God's truth, you can't repent or forgive. For, you can't forgive mum for things that she did if you can't see God's truth. And you can't repent for things you did if you can't see God's truth. So you can see that you're going to find it about God's truth very rapidly mm -hmm. if you go through this process of forgiveness and repentance. Yeah. Yeah. Cheers. Thanks, Justin. So if every time we've harmed someone, there's a penalty upon our soul, mm -hmm. we must be pretty desensitized to our souls if we're not feeling that Correct. straight away. Correct. The reason why most of us die by the time we're 70 is because of how much damage we've done to others. The reason why most of us are in physical pain right now is because of the damage we've done to others or ourselves. But mostly it's the damage we've done to others. So we're so desensitized that our, our own body can't replicate its own cells because of the damage we've done to others. And we kill ourselves through the process. Like, do you think God made a system where your body couldn't recover itself every single day? Of course God made a system where you could recover itself. You know? Why do we grow old? Because we're in a lot of denial about the damage we've done. That's why we grow old. So we can develop that sensitivity through Yeah, you, in, in this process you'll become very sensitive to pain. Very sensitive to pain. Because you have to become sensitive to pain to know what pain you've caused others and yourself. You're going to have to become sensitive to pain. That means becoming sensitive to the pain in your own body. You're going to have to... You, you will become more sensitive to even the pain in your own body through this process. If it's engaged with love, you know, you will become more sensitive you'll know what's going on far better than you've ever known before. Yeah. Now, I need to keep going because there's so much more material and, and I'm already now, we're already a long way behind. So self-deception emotions are dangerous. See, and the reason why, I've already explained. Okay. So the tr truthful emotion revolves around two types of relationships. We've seen what they are. The first type of relationship are the relationships where we or others have treated us unlovingly from God's viewpoint, which resulted in causal soul-based injuries within ourselves, which we must learn to forgive. Right? And the relationships where we have treated others or ourselves at the insistence of others unlovingly from God's point, viewpoint, and which resulted in causal soul-based injuries in others and ourselves, for which we must learn to repent for. So in other words, these, we're in, introducing now these two concepts of forgiveness and repentance. And you notice that we may do things to ourselves that we have to forgive or do things to ourselves that we have to repent for or we, have to, we might do things to others that we have to forgive or have had done things from others that we have to... other way around. Do things towards others that we have to repent for or have done things from others that we need to f forgive. So they are the two causal relationships. The, the simple way for you to work out which is which is to do this diagram, look at the diagram and think, yeah, where did my injuries come from and, why, and who did I create injuries for? And then you'll have a very good idea of who you need to repent towards and who you need to forgive. Now obviously the younger we are, the easier this is going to be because the younger we are, the less damage we've done to other people probably. Although it depends on how... You know, viciously we used our will in the short time we were alive, doesn't it? Yeah. Okay. So let's skip through this because we talked about the three selves, the real self, the hurt self and the facade self. And you can see that, uh, that this, the real self God created, no damage. The hurt self gets hurt from the red lines, from the people we need to forgive. And the facade self does all the damage generally to the other people, the people we need to repent towards. 
You see the relationship between those three cells, if you like. Revision of emotion. All progression is progression in feelings of love. True progression in love involves unloving emotions being released. So in this case, can you see that if we're going to progress in love, there's unloving emotions that are going to have to be released here for true repentance and forgiveness to take place. We can't expect everything to happen without emotion. Right? There's going to be some emotional pain and suffering through this process and it is unavoidable. So we've got to get used to, you know, this is why we said right from the beginning, allow yourself to be emotionally overwhelmed because if you don't, you're going to be avoiding a whole heap of things here that could help your life and the lives of others. Right? This is why allowing emotional overwhelm is so important to your life because without this process, no, no forgiveness, no repentance can take place. Unless there's an emotion involved, no forgiveness and no repentance can take place. The soul can't have a loving emotion and an unloving one in the same, at the same time on the same subject. So you can't say, you know, oh, I really don't like my mother for what she did there. Oh, I've forgiven my mother. I'm sorry, you haven't. Right? The fact is that while that feeling of I don't like my mother exists, true forgiveness can't take place. Right? It's something that has to happen. You can't have two things in the same soul on the same subject. It's impossible. Right? So one of these things is an intellectual thing you're thinking and the other one is the feeling you're feeling. You've got to learn to work out which one's which. Releasing the unloving emotions that are causal will automatically allow our progression. So to forgive, you're going to have some emotion to release. Right? To repent, you're going to have some emotion to release. Can't avoid that. Experience and acting upon other non-causal emotions will be circular. So if you try to forgive when really you need to repent, you'll go around and around for the rest of your life in that cycle and never do anything. No growth, no nothing. And you'll, 10, 20 years time you go, why haven't I got closer to God? Why haven't I got a relationship with God? Because you're lying to yourself. <laughs> You're trying to forgive the people you need to repent towards or you're trying to repent towards the people you need to forgive. Right. Okay. Progression towards God involves having a pure, sincere desire and longing for God's love. A pure, sincere desire and longing is required if you're ever going to experience God's forgiveness. You can experience God's forgiveness as an actual emotion entering you that actually clears away all the reasons why you chose to take an action even. That, can, that is possible. But only possible if you are repentant. If you're not repentant, that won't happen. You will have to go through the law of compensation, which is going to grind you into the ground, reminding you of all the things you've done. So, so there are things we have to learn about the operation of divine love through this process. Having a pure desire and sincere desire and longing for God's truth is important. You cannot forgive something that you don't know the truth about. And you cannot repent for something that you don't know the truth about. That makes sense, doesn't it? If you could do that, then you'd just go, oh, I'm sorry, and all gone. Now, God doesn't work that way. Because God wants you to know the truth. What's God's truth about that? Through the process. So you can't, you can't do repentance and forgiveness without knowing God's truth. Yeah? Having a pure, pure and sincere desire and longing to be humble. Humble is willing to experience all of your emotions, right? You're not going to get anywhere here on this process if you choose to not experience one of your emotions, even one, let alone all of them or most of them. If you choose to stay in your addictions, you're not going to get anywhere with this process because your addictions are all about suppressing emotion. So this is why we spent so much time trying to help you with your addictions. Yeah. So we must come to see ourselves as God sees us that means we, we can't be sorry for something God's saying, you don't have to be sorry for that. 
And we can't be, ask other people to be sorry when God's saying, they don't have to be sorry for that. You're the one that did something wrong there. We must do this in our personal lives in four areas. We must desire to know the absolute truth about how the universe works, right? And one of these absolute truths is how divine love flows, how repentance is a desire towards God for God's forgiveness. We need to understand that law, right? We need to know the absolute truth about ourselves. Wow, I have done that thing wrong. I have. I know for certain I have. And that I think over there that, that that person's blaming me for, I never did anything wrong there. We need to know the difference between those two states. Right? We need to desire to love God, desire to love everything God has created. Even the damage we've done to the environment, although it has not harmed, right, Supposedly, in our imagination, it has not harmed another soul. It has harmed another soul. Every time we go and take out you know, a thousand trees, we think, oh, we've only harmed a thousand trees. No, we've harmed a thousand trees, all the animals, all the birds, all the ecosystems that was dependent upon those trees. And unless we're doing something that is improvement of that situation, We've created harm not only for all of those things, but also for the people who were, who were benefiting from the oxygen and everything else that came from those trees. We've done a whole heap of things out of harmony with love towards God. Okay. Now, this is a, an area where most people are, are completely unaware. Suffering has two primary causes. One primary cause... Guess what? The refusal to repent. What do you think the other primary cause is? The refusal to forgive. So the refusal to repent occurs when we have been unloving towards others or ourselves, which created pain, which we then denied or suppressed, and the law of compensation is operating in our soul to correct our own unloving actions because we refuse to repent. So the law of compensation creates, purposefully creates, Suffering in our soul so that we become aware something's wrong. Something for which we need to repent for has happened. And the same applies to the refusal to forgive. This occurs when others have been unloving towards ourselves or we have been unloving towards ourselves at the request or insistence of others which created pain, which we then denied or suppressed and the law of compensation is operating upon our soul to correct our response to others' unloving actions because we refuse to forgive. So when you refuse to forgive, there is a correctional process already occurring to your soul saying, while you choose to not forgive, you are automatically going to feel pain. Many of you experience this as emotional pain, and it is emotional pain. You feel in turmoil every day, every day, every day until you go, ah, and you go through the process of forgiveness, then no more turmoil. Many of you have sleepless nights, wakeful days, sleepless nights, you know, can't sleep, can't eat, can't do things, all as a result of these two refusals. Pain and suffering. Physical pain and suffering. The physical pain in your body caused by these two issues. Physical pain inside of your, you know, growing old, dying, caused by these two issues. Like everything is caused by these issues. Okay. So forgiveness relationships, we've defined already, haven't we, here, in this introduction. Let's go through them quickly. A relationship with another person who caused our pain from God's perspective by being unloving to us during our childhood or at any other time in our life. Right? So that's a person whom we will need to learn to forgive at some point. Lani, you want to ask? <coughs> Does that include forgiveness of others that have harmed our children? Well... I don't see how the harm of a child, of your child, has been um, like, uh, I don't see that. See, this is a big problem. 
a person who feels this way feels they own their child. So, sure, you do need to forgive people who have harmed other people, but, but honestly, if you are treating it as if it's a personal thing towards you, it isn't. So, it's a personal thing towards God when they've harmed your child, but not towards you. And if you think it's towards you, that's because you already believe you own them. You already, believe, you already have a, a, the wrong concept of what bringing up a child is all about. Yeah? Does that make sense? Mary? Wouldn't I, as a mother, need to repent for whatever created the injury within that child that allowed that attraction? Or Correct. Or generated that attraction? Correct. Isn't that a bit of an amazing shock? Uh, most of us get very incensed when somebody else does something to our children. But they're not our children, they're God's children. Yeah. So we've already got a problem. And the fact that we believe we are owners of our own children means that we've already done quite a lot of damage to our child because we actually have a belief that we own them. And that belief has obviously entered our child at some point. So our child believes we own them. And that is a damage to our child. So we've got something to repent for under those circumstances, not forgive. See, forgiveness isn't an imagined thing. It's not saying, oh, that person killed my child, so I've got to forgive them. No, they're not your child. So the only person that needs to forgive them is God for whatever the person did. Right? You need to learn to repent for all of the feelings you have about it and also forgive your own family and your own mother and father for all the feelings you have about ownership of your child that causes you to feel all this pain. Yes, you need to do all that. Yeah. Does that make sense? Mary, you want to say? I also consider if I think about my own mother, if she felt very upset and felt like she had to forgive all the women who were hard on me when in fact she placed the injuries within me through her own treatment of me that made me open to, to, other, to women being hard on me. Exactly. If she took that as, uh, oh, I need to forgive those other women, she's just completely skipped around the repentance part of the relationship with me where she's created a damage that left me open to yeah. placating women or whatever it is. And, she, and, and the mother usually has treated the daughter, in this case, the worst of all of those people. She's had the most long-term negative effect on the, on the daughter in this case and yet she's not repentant at all. And yet she wants all the other people to be repentant for what they've done to her daughter. And really what's she doing? Because she's owning, she feels ownership over the daughter, she really wants them to be sorry towards her, not towards the daughter because the reality is she's not sorry towards the daughter. So yeah, you've got to be very careful of those kind of emotions. The reality is it's lovely when somebody says, I forgive you for all of the you know, things you did wrong towards my child, but the reality is, is it, is it, is it being honest? You, d you don't have the ability to forgive them because it didn't happen to you, it happened to your child. It's only your child that has the ability to forgive them or God who is the real parent of that child. So, yeah, not, no real emotions involved in that. It might sound nice, and the world loves it, right? The world, world just laps it up, but it's not real. Yeah. Julie? So the emotional process, if somebody's hurt you and you go through that emotional process... Uh, can we define hurt from God's perspective? Okay, That's what yeah. we said here on the note yeah. here, see, from God's perspective. See, many of us go, you've hurt me, you've hurt me. And from God's perspective, they did nothing to you. Mm. Like, for example, many of you ladies at this point feel, if a man doesn't do what I want, he's hurt me. But God, he's allowed to not do what you want, from God's perspective. So he hasn't hurt you from God's perspective. It's only your perspective. Now, now this occurs from God's perspective. This is about getting God's ideas about who's hurt you and who hasn't. So continue. Dare I? Um, Dare I? <laughs> no. So if somebody's angry at you mm -hmm. and then you feel the anger, okay, you feel 
So the they emotion. have hurt you from God's perspective because yes. they're angry. Yeah. That's and right. anger is a violent emotion towards that's another person. That's right. So if you're going through the emotional process of feeling that, is that part of the process towards forgiveness? Still jumping ahead. Yes, it is. But we'll, ju we'll oh, just go through okay, the process. <laughs> We've got to first define it, right? And then we'll go through the process. A relationship with another person who suppressed our pain from God's perspective. So the first... The first part of forgiveness relationship is the people that actually cause the pain. And then there's a whole group of people, sometimes not the same people, who suppressed the pain that was caused by someone else. So, for example, this is like mum caused me some pain and then dad said, you know, you can't cry about it. So dad didn't actually cause the pain in that situation. He suppressed it which is actually another thing that was harming us, which we will need to forgive. So you see the difference between the cause and the suppression? Yep. Okay, a relationship with oneself where we purposefully or unknowingly chose to punish ourselves at the emotional request of others because of the pain or perceived pain that others claimed we caused them. Is that getting a bit complicated for you? This is where we choose to take unloving actions towards ourselves because other people want us to blame ourselves rather than blame, place the blame upon them, the person who truly did the damage. Your parents have been masters at this. They damage you. And then they tell you the reason why they damaged you was because you deserved it. Huh? Now there's a f and we have to forgive ourselves for believing them. <laughs> for believing we deserved it. Catherine, thanks. Mary's just about with you. And then we find that we punish ourselves in exactly the same way that our parents punished us. Correct. Yep. So we, we become the perpetrator of abuse of ourselves because we're trying to get the agreement of our parents. You think about this is what's been happening for you quite a lot, right? Yes. So this is the damage. We've got to forgive ourselves for doing that. Right? We've got to just say, you've got to say sorry to yourself for doing this bad thing to yourself. Yeah, they've been dead for over half my life. Correct. Often that's the case. Yeah. Of course, they're still in the spirit world, probably perpetrating the same things, right? Yes. But, but yes, you're right. Okay, so all of these kinds of relationships usually begin at conception and continue throughout our life. So, you know, these are relationships where we need to forgive. And you'll feel that the ones that are happening at the inception of our life, at conception onwards, are going to be much stronger than the ones that happen throughout our life. So, for example, if you're in a marriage relationship or a partnership and the other person hurts you, even if they abuse you physically of some kind, the reality is the person you're going to have to forgive the most is going to be mum or dad. Because mum or dad created some kind of openness in you towards this kind of abuse. And the person who is a secondary part of the abuse is the person who's actually abusing you. Does that make sense? We often don't see it that way. We see it completely opposite. We, we, you know what we most of the time do? We, we, we want to punish and abuse the person who's abused us. Right? And we say they should be sorry for what they've done. And we let our parents get off scot-free without having to do anything, without having to forgive our parents for anything. This is us not understanding the truth. If you don't understand the truth, you can't repent and you can't forgive. So you've got to understand the truth. Who's been the real cause of this openness inside of me? You've got to understand that truth. So Nick, I'm getting way behind time here, so sorry about this, guys. No, it's okay. I love the engagement, right? It's really beautiful. Um, I'm just thinking about my family life and my family family dynamic. I had a very yeah, angry... Remember, no personal questions in this oh, okay. discussion. But it's... All right, it's just about... 
So an older sibling yep. who is very damaged yep. and projecting a lot of anger and rage towards a younger sibling. A younger sibling. Yep. In the process of repenting or forgiving. Forgiving um, the parents. Yeah. So to to so if I you know to engage with that um, damage that he was causing, but then be uh, desiring for forgiveness of my parents for that behaviour. Is that the well? Yeah. You know, this is where we've got to be very careful. Many of you focus on the sibling who's created some damage and say, they've got to repent, you know, I'm angry with them, they've got to repent. We eventually go through the feeling of forgiving them, we think, but we haven't because the person who caused their behaviour was our parents. Mm. There was an openness in our parents that created their behaviour. So it's actually our parents we've got to forgive and we're still avoiding that. So, yeah, there's a linkage between what happens with our siblings and our avoidance. Yeah, let's look at the next kind. So notice we've said at the bottom here, most of these relationships, forgiveness relationships, are well established during our childhood. In other words, the majority of people that you will need to forgive in your life will be people associated with your childhood. They won't be people associated with your adult life very much. Right? There'll be attractions, but nowhere near the amount of emotions associated with the childhood. Okay? Let's continue, shall we? Because um, we've only got 10 minutes before dinner. Rece didn't that time go fast? Yeah. Receiving God's love requires I forgive others or myself for our unloving choices, and suffering cannot cease until I forgive others or myself for our unloving choices. The reason why suffering can't cease is because we need some feedback mechanism to tell us that we've still got a problem. <laughs> right? And breaking a law always results in suffering and so suffering is always an indication that we've yet to forgive or repent. In this case we're defining forgiveness. Okay. Now, addic addiction relationships are created automatically when we refuse to forgive the persons who actually caused our pain. When we refuse to forgive the people who suppressed our pain, when we refuse to forgive ourselves for the punishment we inflict upon ourselves, when we refuse to feel our own pain. So every time you refuse to feel your own pain, you automatically will create an addiction. Guaranteed. So, so the, one of the fastest ways to stop creating addictions is to start feeling your own pain. Does that make sense? Every time you refuse to feel your own pain, whether it be physical or emotional, you will create an addiction that you will also now need to repent for at some point in your future. Because it will be out of harmony with love. The fastest way to stop your addictions is to feel your pain. So many of you go, oh, I've got to analyze this, analyze that, analyze this, analyze that, work this out, work. No, if you just felt your pain, you wouldn't have to analyze anything. All of your addictions would just disappear one by one really fast because you're, you're now feeling the emotions that create your pain. You see? So, you know, all the identification of your addictions that we've gone through and all of the stuff about your facade we've gone through, and you know how freaked out you were about, oh, my God, it's just like, uh, there's so much of it. It doesn't have to be that bad if you just chose to feel your own pain, but it has to be your real pain. It can't be your facade. It, can't, it has to be real from God's perspective. It has to be the truth of your pain. Right? We get in lots of trouble about that because we often want it to be something that's not, you know. But if we were totally willing to feel the truth of every pain, we'd have no addictions. Because your addictions are only created so you can avoid it. So instead of it being some very complicated way of deconstructing yourself, like a person progressing on the natural love path has to do, the fact that you're choosing to experience all of your own pain emotionally means that it's now a very simple process. Right? But it has to be based on truth. It has to be sincere. Right? You can see, isn't it wonderful, like God creates this really complicated system 
for all the people who don't want to do the really simple system. The really simple system is God's love, God's forgiveness, our repentance. That's a really simple system. That, that's created for all the people who really want to feel emotion. And for all the people who don't want to feel emotion, God creates this nice complicated system that is perfect, but it's, it has to be complicated because you're trying to not feel emotion. And emotion is the only way you're going to forgive or repent. So, so for all those people who don't want to go through the emotion, God creates this big system so that you feel frustrated and annoyed and eventually you go through an emotion. But you're forced to go through every single one of them. And that's what the law of compensation does. It forces you to go through every single emotion. It's a fantastic system for every person who doesn't want to forgive or repent. But every person who really wants to forgive and repent doesn't have to go through it. Oh, isn't it wonderful? I just think that's wonderful. When I discovered that in the first century, I go, oh, isn't this fantastic? I go, one of the amazing things about how God designed the soul. When we refuse to forgive, we automatically create addiction relationships in order to avoid our personal pain, avoid the suppression of pain, avoid the healing of our tendency to punish ourselves, substitute pleasure for pain. We, you know, we automatically create these things because we just refuse to forgive. Refusing to forgive creates a whole heap of problems. For which we will have to repent as well as forgive. Okay. Now, I've only got halfway through my talk, and it's uh, five to four. So I don't know what we're going to do about that. Um, let's have a powwow. How, how does this sound to you guys? Um, um, I've probably got another, well, it depends on your questions, of course. I've probably got another 20 or 30 minutes of material to present to you, at least. And then, depending on your questions, there'll probably be an hour or so, I suppose, if you added up all the questions and everything. Um, how do you, what if we scrap the movie tonight, yeah, and from 5.30, after, after we do the photo um, tonight, we, we just come back here and we finish this discussion off. Does that sound all right with you? Um, I, just, I just feel, particularly while I've got all of you together who are engaged, that it's a wonderful thing that we can discuss this with a lot more completion than just getting halfway through. Does that sound all right with you? Yeah, so perhaps we need to do that. Yeah. We'll, we'll announce at dinner that there's no movie tonight, yeah. Obviously, I won't announce it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mary can't hardly speak there. Um, if we... Could we just go back to that last, if we're going to finish now, because I didn't get it all and I felt it was important. Yeah, remember this is all also written down for you. Oh, it is too. Of course, yeah. Sorry. So this is all there. Yep. yep. Isn't it wonderful though? I don't know what you feel about it, but it's just an amazing gift that God's given. The, the laws of divine love are like the all-encompassing laws of the universe. The laws of natural love are necessary. You know, so the law of compensation, for example, is a necessary law needed by those people who refuse to engage the laws of divine love. Right? But the laws of divine love can be engaged by people um, without having to go through all of this, all of this stuff, you know, that there's still, but there's going to be a real strong desire for truth in this, right? Which most of us struggle with. And this is why we need sometimes to start on the natural love path, examining things and examining things, examining things, because most of the time we're really struggling to actually see the truth, right? But once you see the truth and you know what to forgive and you know what to repent, now you've got a, a, a far greater capacity to grow more rapidly than before. So, so people who spend thousands of years going through the law of compensation, one, one error at a time, 
forgiving, going through the process of forgiveness and repentance. And they're still going through repentance and forgiveness, but they're not doing it with God. You know, they've been hammered by the law into the state where they realise what they've done. That's not forgiveness, is it? Or repentance. That, that's, that's a deep reluctance to, to forgive or repent. A person who embraces the concepts of forgiveness and repentance has a much greater capacity to grow towards God than any other person. And also, in the process, you get to understand God, why God made these laws. You can understand, once you understand the concepts, why God made them, made it this way. It's wonderful. Right? So this is why... And it's laws like this that give you more appreciation for God and God's nature and God's kindness and God's goodness and, and God's fairness and justice and you know, all, those, all those qualities. You can see why God's done it this way. Yeah. Anyway, I've enjoyed uh, my discussion so far with you guys. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. And we'll get to have the other half of the discussion, hopefully, after our dinner. Sound all right?